Ministry of Health of Ukraine. Croc 2. Medicine. Year 2019. Number 009. A 59-year-old woman was brought into the rheumatology unit. Extremely severe case of scleroderma is suspected. Objectively she presents with malnourishment, mask-like, face, and acroosteolysis. Blood. Erythrocytes 2.2 times 10 to the 9 L. Erythrocyte sedimentation rate 40 mm per hour. Urine. Elevated. Levels of free oxyproline. Name one of the most likely pathogenetic links in this case. A. Formation of antibodies to native DNA. B. Formation of antibodies to collagen. C. Formation of antibodies to blood corpus. D. Formation of antibodies to vessel wall. E. Formation of antibodies to transversal striated muscles. Scleroderma is an autoimmune connective tissue and rheumatic disease that causes inflammation in the skin, localized scleroderma, and other areas of the body such as the heart, lungs, and kidneys. Systemic scleroderma. It occurs when the autoimmune response causes inflammation in the body. Makes too much collagen. Collagen-induced arthritis is a multifaceted, immunologically mediated disease involving T cells, B cells, and populations of inflammatory cells that infiltrate the joint tissue and induce pathology. It is caused by anti-collagen antibodies that localize to the joint and activate complement. A major Immunogenic and arthritogenic epitope on type E collagen resides in a restricted area of the type E collagen chains. Type E collagen adds structure and strength to connective tissues and is found primarily in cartilage, the vitreous humor, transparent, colorless, gelatinous mass that fills the space in the eye between the lens and the retina inner ear, and nucleus pulposus, inner core of the vertebral disc. Subcutaneous collagen deposition in facial skin gives the face a characteristic smooth, mask-like appearance, and may be associated with perioral, labial or tongue telangiectasias, spider veins. Dilated or broken blood vessels located near the surface of the skin or mucous membranes. Acroosteolysis, phalangeal osteolysis, is the resorption of the distal phalanges in the upper and lower extremities. It is associated with various disorders including genetic conditions, rheumatic diseases, psoriatic arthritis and systemic sclerosis in particular, hyperparathyroidism, severe neuropathy, digital ischemia, trauma, and trauma and other local factors. Osteolysis is a progressive condition where bone tissue is destroyed. Bones lose minerals, mostly calcium, softens, degenerates, and become weaker. Proline hydroxylation is required for the stability of the collagenous triple helix at physiological temperatures. Hydroxyproline is regarded as a marker of bone resorption, because collagen breakdown occurs during bone resorption. It is a product of post-translational hydroxylation of proline in the pro-collagen chain, which is released when type I collagen is degraded. However, some newly synthesized collagen chains are degraded even before they are secreted by the osteoblast. Therefore, hydroxyproline is also influenced by osteoblast activity. In addition, type I collagen turnover in tissues other than bone and nutritional collagen intake also contributes to the circulating pool of hydroxyproline. Hydroxyproline is mostly excreted unchanged via the kidneys but can also be metabolized in the liver. That is why urinary hydroxyproline is not an ideal indicator of bone resorption. Instead, type I collagen cross-link based compounds are used as other bone resorption markers.
The answer is b. Formation of antibodies to collagen.